What's up? My name is John. Welcome back to First Time with Film. Today we're going to take a look at my first ever roll of film that I had developed. I took all of these photos on this camera right here. This is the Voigtlander Bessematic. It has got the 35mm 3.4 on there. This is a beast of a camera. This is the first film camera I ever found, I ever bought. So today we're going to look at the first roll of film I ever shot on this guy. Jumping right into the photos. Look at how cute she is. We're gonna throw up the grid lines on all of these photos. You can see that I've just centered her. A lot of these photos you'll see would be centered. I tried to use the leading lines. I tried to use things like that to get your eye to be drawn to it, but not the best, not the worst photo. Of course, playing with this camera, trying to figure out all of its settings, I'm not able to keep the shutter speed as fast as I want. I'm sure this was probably shot at like 1 2 50th of a second, so just a hair too slow. This camera only goes to 500th of a second, so even a 500th of a second probably wouldn't have gotten her pouncing. I figured it was worth a shot. Throwing up the grid lines again, she's still in that center frame. She's still the center subject. It's clear what the picture's about, but there's nothing really interesting about it. Then I've got this sign in my backyard. This private property sign, for some reason to me, I just find it interesting. It's got the vines growing around it. When we throw the grid lines up, you can see I did not perfectly center this, so it just looks off. The words are centered, but the whole sign isn't centered. I even had a second shot at this where I got a little bit closer. The focus is much sharper. I like the lighting on this one. I think it, I think it's probably just like 10 minutes later. Throw up the grid lines, and again, I'm still just a little bit off, albeit much closer to having it perfectly centered. This picture right here of Ellie, again, just, just having a photo shoot in my backyard. This photo right here of Ellie is probably one of my favorites. I get her face right in the center frame there and it's just interesting. You've got most of the frame in front of her so it just it's more inviting of a photo that way and, and I, I, I like it. I don't know, there's something about it that I appreciate. So then just testing out the camera, seeing what its capabilities are, I went inside, took a photo of my light. This light right here, I had it on white, took a picture to see what the exposure would look like. <laughs> I forgot I took this photo. It's just a picture of Ellie. I like the harsh sun. I like the way the shadows hit. I didn't really care for the pose, but you throw the grid lines up and I absolutely didn't nail this one either. The lines of the door make it kind of distracting. She's too close to it, but she is in the center and she's the, clearly the subject. I wanted to see what kind of exposure reading the camera would give me shooting from inside to outside. I'm kind of learning this whole light meter thing as I go. And it did a fairly good job. I, I've heard that you can overexpose photos on film much better than on digital and recover things. Now all of these photos are unedited. This is just how I got them back from the lab. So then I go out to the front yard and I've got these beautiful hibiscus flowers that are blooming and I just couldn't help but take a photo of them. And I purposefully put this, this flower off to the right. I should have turned a little bit so that the flowers looked further apart than they are so that one was maybe on the right line of the thirds and the other one was on the left line of the thirds. I don't hate this picture. I like the pop of color in the sea of green. It's not bad, it's not great. It's definitely better than the next one which is just a super boring photo, terrible composition, nothing going on here. Let's just move on to another really bad photo. So they're not all gonna be bangers when you shoot in your first roll of film. I tried to go out at a little bit past golden hour in my neighborhood to see what kind of low light capabilities. The light meter was really hard to read because it wasn't picking up enough light to really tell me what to do so I kind of guessed and I still underexposed it. I think I also had to shoot at like 1 30th of a second and I was hand holding it. So you can see the lights in the back there behind that car on the left are diagonal because when I push the shutter I push the camera down and away. Not a great photo. On to the next one, still nighttime that same night, walking back into my house, this light is right outside my house. I just wanted to see again how the light meter would respond in this kind of situation because it's not a battery powered light meter. I didn't know when I bought this camera if the light meter worked at all, if it was accurate, inaccurate, overexposed, underexposed. So I was trying to get it in as many situations as I could early on so that when I got this roll developed, I could kind of see how it reacted. And this one I think I exposed properly. This picture is just really interesting to me because it's a light in essentially pure black. Just for reference, on the left of this number, there's my garage door, and on the right is more brick wall that should travel out of the frame. But I kind of like that I exposed only for the light, and you just get that little bit of brick, and the rest of it's kind of vignetted away. Again, an unedited photo, I, I kind of like it. I don't know, maybe I'm weird. So then I went on a trip. We went on a trip to near Smyrna Beach the week after I got this camera, and we went with some friends, and so I was like, hey, I'm taking this camera, make me take photos with it. I want to learn to take photos on film. So this is the first photo I took of a person. 
it's awful. <laughs> it's it's really bad. Like it's really really bad. Look at how blurry it is. The cups are blurry. The people are blurry. The cabinets are blurry. I don't know what if I wasn't paying attention to what my shutter speed was. This is a terrible terrible photo. Even with the grid lines up. Like at least I put the people on the grid lines, but man. So as we were walking to the beach, there's a bunch of hotels, a bunch of resorts along the beach, and I saw this one and I thought it was a really interesting building, the way that it had curved edges, it wasn't sharp, it was much different than all of the other hotels, but I didn't have the right lens, apparently, <laughs> to get the composition I wanted. I would rather crop in on this. You could see I've got some of the palm fronds or something up here in the left corner. All these trees down in the bottom that kind of cover the bottom of the building are very distracting. It'd be more interesting if it were just maybe those palm trees in the middle of the building. I I do like that I put it down in this lower left quadrant here. I don't know. With a little bit of editing, maybe it's not the worst photo ever. Unlike this one, where I couldn't even center the path to the beach, it's just crooked, it's bad. I think I was trying to walk and take the photo. Just not an interesting photo. We'll move on to the next one where I really feel like I finally started to see frames. This one I really enjoy of the beach. I wish I would have put this lifeguard tower right on the grid line there, but the blue-green of the water, the tan color of the sand, and the red of the lifeguard tower just Something about this composition really makes me feel comfortable, makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside, makes me feel at home. And so I really like this beach photo personally. The next one might be my favorite of the whole roll. Something about the green cast on this photo. Maybe it's because it's got a red subject, but the green cast on this photo makes me feel like it's way older than the actual photo is. I wish that I would have waited until these people were not in the frame. They're just kind of distracting. And also, I wish that I had leveled it out a little bit better. When you put the grid lines on it, you could see that it's just not perfectly centered or straight on, and I wish I would have taken a small step to the right and gotten it perfectly in there. This photo is of the girls on the beach. They were just talking. Probably not the best composition, but definitely not the worst composition. At least I've got them in the center. You can kind of take this as, you know, small people, big ocean. I wish I would have been even further away to really get that how little we are feeling. This one was one I was like, hey, let's just see what happens. I put it on infinite focus. I pretty much put the camera in the sand and took a photo and I don't hate it. Now, is it level? No. Should it be? Yes. Another photo of the girls, I got a little closer to them. This photo again is something that really speaks to me. Shot it vertical to really make sure that they're, they stand out as the subjects. And when you drop the grid lines on it, you can see that they line up right on the grid lines. And just something about the balance of the two of them in the photo, the ocean breaking in the background. I really enjoy it. I kind of wish I would have gotten maybe a lower perspective. All in all, still really happy with this photo. Really like the colors in this photo. I really like this photo. This photo is probably the most moody of all the photos. I was able to keep the people off to the right along with the buildings and you got the big ocean to the left. I really like that if you can see the lady in the photo there is actually looking out to the ocean. So you kind of get your eye drawn into the storm and the people and then it kind of leads out over the ocean where the sky clears. Something about this is really nice to me. It feels like there's a storm brewing. It feels like it has a, it has a vibe, you know, it's got a vibe. <laughs> then we left the beach. I don't know, something about this kind of photo, these leading lines, stairs and pathways and things like that really, really draw me in. So I was like, hey, you guys go up the stairs. I'm gonna take a picture of these stairs. And I actually kind of centered this photo. Like I'm a little bit crooked, but it, it could have been way worse. But either way, a little bit of rotation, a little bit of cropping. This is a great photo for me at my current level. I'm definitely seeing improvement as the roll goes on. I think this might have been an accidental photo. I don't know why I would take a picture of my knee, but I did. There's a picture of my knee. Enjoy. <laughs> this photo is actually when we were leaving the beach. I really, really like the way that the greens and the browns in this one came out. As you drop the grid lines on them, you can see that I did a fairly good job of centering the opening in the pathway so you could kind of see the payoff. Now, I think that's a bird. If I had just waited a split second and gotten the bird right over the path, I think that would have made it even better. What are you gonna do? But I'm still, I'm, I'm improving over every photo until we get to this photo. Something about the harsh sun and the, and the shadows, I wanted to get a photo of something like this, but I didn't get close enough to the subject, which would have been this door. I would have really liked to have gotten the green of this door to be a little bit more green. The light meter captured for the shadows and not for the highlights. However, my framing is getting better. You can see the door is dead center. I'm starting to kind of see what I'm supposed to see. I'm just not getting the full composition now. And then we get to a couple of photos where I tried to do street photography. This photo right here was something that I saw driving home one day and I was like, man, I gotta try and get a photo of that and see if I can frame it up and make it look interesting. And 
I did not. <laughs> I am getting better at centering my images or putting them on the grid lines the way that I want, but that sprinkler head down on the bottom is really obnoxious. It's not perfectly straight up and down. So a little bit of rotating, a little bit of cropping, maybe even a little bit of color correcting make this more interesting. It just seems like I could have overexposed it more and gotten more out of it. This photo is probably my favorite photo from this little section. There's this staircase and the way that the sun was hitting it was making some crazy harsh shadows. So I found a vantage point that I liked after looking around a little bit more. Just something about the stairs coming down, the railing shadow on the wall, minimalist color palette, frames it inside the other part of the staircase and it you just you know what you're supposed to be looking at. And maybe if it had a little more contrast I think that maybe this would be even more interesting. Maybe if it was more black and white, maybe had I not shot it on color film. Either way, I really like this composition. I like this, this photo, and I'm excited to try and find more things like it. Then we've got this tag on this dumpster, and I wish that I had taken this photo differently. One thing is that the cars in the background are crazy distracting from the actual image, and it'd be better if they weren't there. This tag should be either on the left or in the center, and it's just not. So I didn't frame this one as well as I wanted to. It looked good in camera, but I was only looking at the dumpster. I did not pay attention to the background, which something I gotta learn, right? This photo is of a hotel. I was walking a little bit further down and this hotel is crazy orange and teal colored. And this one I overexposed a little bit and I think that that's fine. I kind of like the way that this one looks. I actually took this exact same photo on my iPhone and then tried to edit it to make it look this way. I like the soft orange on the roof. I wish that the blue doors were more blue. It's very centered. I, I love it. I think it's great. Moving to the second last photo on the roll, I wish that I had had more space to get the line that I wanted on this photo. So to the right of me, you can kind of see it on the edge of the frame, there is a pillar that I'm literally putting the lens of the camera up against to get as far over as I can because I did not want this street, especially not the part where the sun is hitting it, to be taking up as much of the photo as it was. I didn't really succeed at that, but the idea of the photo I still appreciate and I just think that if I cropped it a little bit, this would be more interesting. And then my final photo, as I was leaving this hotel, I saw this Toyota truck and something about it resonated with my childhood. My grandfather had a truck that was just like this and I rode everywhere in it. Because it was in a parking lot the way that it was, I decided to take this picture head on and get down nice and low. A couple things that I would do to improve this photo. One, I'd get a little bit closer to cut out that car on the right and then I would have moved my car, which is the car on the left, so that it's literally just this truck in the photo. It's got this bent antenna on the left, it's got dings, it's beat up, it's got a matte gray color, and it just, I don't know man, even this little like lens flare on the bottom right, it just, I love this photo, it's great. So that's the end of the roll. And you can see that if you do this, if you constantly are trying to push yourself, challenge yourself, and get new compositions, and work with your camera, that even in a single roll, you can go from taking this photo to taking this photo. I love everything that I did in this role and I hope that I can share more of them with you. If you liked a certain photo in this one, make sure you comment it down in the comments. And if you're not subscribed already, please go ahead and subscribe. That'd be great. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for stopping by.